And I mean, I'll be honest, I hit a, I hit a rock bottom for, for a couple of days during this COVID-19. Uh, and it took me, re, you know, reminding myself from teaching other people as a motivational speaker, what happens when you're at rock bottom? What do you do? Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome to Go Live with Joshua Scott. I'm your host. This is episode number 17, man. Cruising along, uh, got my friends on today. What's up, Elijah? Say hello to the crowd. Hey everybody, how are you? Man, so good to have you. Thanks for jumping on. I know everybody's crazy busy right now. You guys just came off um, a Smiles at Sea virtual conference last week, right? Yes, yeah, we just a couple of days ago, we were, uh, we were cruising from home. <laughs> <laughs> nice cruising and quarantine um good man hey last time we saw each other uh we were in new orleans delivering wild WOW conference uh you had your whole team down there you guys were kind of using it as a team retreat kind yeah. of time away as well um when when did you when did you guys get a sense of like oh this is gonna get serious or this is gonna get crazy I tell you what. As soon as here's when I knew uh, it was going to get really crazy. Um, honestly, I kind of blocked it out. I blocked everything out. Um, I'm I'm one to ten. To, it, it was ignorance, to be honest with you. I, full transparency. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. I was in denial for a while. Um, you you know you can't mess with my private team retreat. You know, thank God everybody came back healthy. We, you know, we we, we quarantined uh, for a while. But here's what happened. Um, it got real whenever I was, it was that night, I, I had just seen you on the street of, of, of New Orleans and I was playing, uh, there was the trumpet players playing. Yeah. And it was like what I'd been waiting for. And I went live and I was like super happy in my own element. And this is before it got bad. I mean, there was 12 cases in New Orleans. So that's nothing compared to 100,000 something. Now that's like bad. Yeah. So, and I'm shutting off the news, full transparency. So I didn't know anything. I mean, ignorant of it, right? My wife, you know, I, I call her my uh, CCNBC News because I, I really get information. <laughs> I can't cut it out. I, it got real whenever I went live, and people and on my own group, like I have like one of the most positive Facebook groups trapped in. Yeah, it. yeah. People in my own group were bashing me I'm like, <laughs> they're like get out <laughs> get out like what are you doing yeah, I'm like, what this can't be true so, <laughs> so and, 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 and so that's really when it, i'm like wow this must be getting pretty serious so they are a positive group and people are being negative nellies i'm like this must be serious so i got home uh and i realized that i posted the next day i'm like going to get a test just to be safe and once again I got slaughtered. <laughs> you know, I have a, a, Wasting a, tests. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, yes. I got slaughtered because I have a, I have a baby at home, right? An 11-month-old daughter at home. And, and, you know, little kids can pass and die from COVID. We know that to be true now. Yeah. So, and your old mother-in-law at home. I wanted to be safe. But I had no symptoms. I'm like, no symptoms, but safe to be sorry. I'm going to get tested. Literally. Took through the ringer for going and attempt. I didn't get a test, thank God, but attempted to go and get a test, and I got took through the ringer. I had to delete my own posts because I already got blocked from that so bad, right? <laughs> but it was all ignorance. I just didn't know. Yeah. No, but there's a certain way you tell people. You private message them, say, "Hey, Elijah, you probably should turn on the news." Yeah. But I'm not really quick, but that's whenever I figured out that this is serious. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, we, um, gosh, I, you're so right. I was like, we got there. I was, you know, we were both speaking, but it was just almost like you just had to put it out of your mind and just focus and go like, I don't have a choice. Like I'm, I'm speaking, I got to stay in this. And so, but man, Sunday morning, we woke up, went to the airport and you could just, there was this sense of like, this is going to get crazy. And we came home and that's when they, they closed restaurants that night. I went to the grocery store, like, you know, parked 18 rows away because there was no spots closed, trying to grab cans of beans off the shelf, you know, all that. So, yeah. um, and we were, it was interesting as we were in New Orleans and I remember Saturday night, so we did a whitening ball and, uh, you know, you, you played that and, uh, 
didn't post any pictures that night to social. Like I, that was the first time I was like, I don't know that I should be posting this, you know? Yeah. Um, but tell us, tell us a little bit about that, man. Cause that was, that was pretty, that was a pretty lit night, not only for the venue, but also just you playing and you DJing, but that's a new thing for you. Like why, what made you want to get into DJing? Absolutely. Well, the first off, yeah, that night was absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. get DJ for a, a big event, DJ smile. That's my, that's my new DJ name. And you know, I've been doing it now for about a year. Um, first off, I love music. I love good energy. I love positive vibes. And, um, you know, I figured, you know, what the heck? I'm a firm believer pursuing your, pursuing your dreams. And everybody needs a hobby. Well, I love music. I love good vibes. I'm like, well, why not go and DJ? So the whole point of me going and DJ was for one main reason. And it was to go and do motivational concerts for kids. Right? That was the number one reason for DJ. So essentially me going, I'm a motivational speaker for kids. So I speak to high schools, right? I've been doing it since I've been 15 years old. It's my ultimate passion, speaking to a large high school and leaving a huge impact. And so I basically decided I wanted to make a bigger impact. How do you do that? Speak to 10 to 20 high schools in one big football stadium. But what happens is, is all the 10 to 20 high schools are in the stadium and all of a sudden there's a stage in the middle, all of a sudden music drops. Well, that's my cue to walk onto the football field. I walk onto the stage in the middle of the football field, kind of like the Super Bowl, and I walk onto my mix table. I play a set, and I introduce the first motivational speaker to the stage. They say 30, 45 minutes, motivational speech. They walk off stage. Next motivational speaker comes on stage with a walk-on song. I'm pumping everybody up like the MC, the host. And then I go, I get my message last. I walk off stage. Before I walk off stage, we bring a car onto the, onto the football field and give – a 15-year-old who made it to college early like I did, we reward them. They don't know who it is. We reward them with a brand-new car so they can drive back and forth to school because they may not have been able to uh, afford that due to the, their family situation. So anyways, that was the whole idea behind going to be a DJ. I needed to learn that first because I had this vision. Yeah. just so happens I'm speaking at dental conferences all over the country in the first place, really all over the world. So I'm like, you know what? While I'm at a dental conference speaking, I like to have fun. I may as well DJ – at the demo events as well. So that's how yeah. that came Nice, nice. That was, man, it was a ton of fun that night for sure. Right in the middle of Mardi Gras world. I mean, we're like dancing in the middle of these huge floats. Uh, it, it was crazy. One of my team members was like, who gets to do this stuff? You know, and I was like, I was like, I know, man, it's, it's legit. So uh, we got a lot of people online right now. So if you guys are out there, leave a comment, uh, say what's up, give us a wave all that. Any questions for Elijah, hit him up. I'm watching right here and I'll, I'll pass them to him. I would imagine, um, and I know that Smiles at Sea was, is probably the most challenging uh, one of your businesses to, to lead through this. But I know you guys have kind of pivoted and, and planned some stuff for the end of the year. Give us, give us a little bit of that and what you guys are doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me tell you what, we we have flawless reputation uh, before this. I spent five years building this, this business. Yeah. And when this COVID-19 happened, um, it looked like we were about to go down like the Titanic part two. I was destined to not let that happen, right? Um, you couldn't be in a worse uh, position than I was. And the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, we had not one cruise, but two cruises that we had to reschedule, right? And so, um, you know, we handled them all um, in the best way that we could, Right. I have six, uh, six team members uh, on board that they're paid all year round. We've got crazy expenses. What do we do in this situation? Yeah. Uh, it was a very difficult decision we, that we had to make. Um, but we decided what we would do is we decided, hey, look, our April cruise, like, let's go ahead and let's credit everybody uh, for that cruise for a, a future event, right? And let's do a give back cruise uh, in November, uh, which includes that October event. So in November, we decided for the entire industry, we're going to do a give back cruise, meaning that they don't have to pay for an event ticket. Keep that event ticket for the April cruise and put that in your pocket for later. It never expires. Transfer it to another team member. And we came up with six other conferences they could use it at. Plus, we had the same speakers in the April cruise. We had them do their event online live, which was a couple of days ago. But this uh, event that's happening in November, look, everybody's going to need a vacation, right? It's a weekend cruise. And this time, the $500 to $1,000 event ticket, they can keep that. So it's just the cruise plus fees. And we get to come together, a nice three-day weekend cruise, and basically go on vacation. It's, it's going to be much needed. 
Yeah. No, I, I love that, man. I, just watching your guys' creativity and how to handle that because that's it's a challenging situation for sure. I think, uh, and I, I want to ask you about how you even got into the whole cruise type experience, but I, you know, I think one of my predictions for this is when we look at the CE world, I, I think we're gonna, it's going to kind of push one of two ways. I, I think so much is going to move virtually because now we've proven it can do that. But then I think the other part's going to move to experiences. Like if people are going to travel, it's going to be experience based with CE. And you've been doing this. <laughs> like this is not new for you. So how did all this come out with the, even the original cruise idea? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I have been going to continuing education courses and being bored out of my mind. Um, I was bored out of my mind. I, got out of, I graduated from um, Ohio State University um, by trade. I'm a, a dental hygienist. And I went to continuing education courses, uh, typically after work. And sometimes I would go to these big conferences and I would catch myself on my cell phone. I would catch myself if my phone died, staring at the wall about the snooze. Yeah. And I would just be bored. And then I would go and speak. And when I would speak at events, I would be, I would always engage the crowd and I would collect energy and fun. And people would come up and say, oh my God, that was so much fun. And I try to make things entertaining. And I went on a cruise for the very first time and I heard this, uh, these you know, amazing entertainers, and I, I hear the music, and I'm up till late at night having so much fun, and I thought for myself for a year, how do I make this happen um, in my life, in the dental world, and I couldn't think of it, came like a ton of bricks like a year later. I'm like, wow, why don't I bring speakers that are way better than me, and bring them on, onto a cruise ship, and why don't I have a conference on a cruise and bring dentists and team members to have a team building event on a ship and have a complete experience in a community? And so I, I did that. And fast forward, you know, five years later, you know, this October, we were on track to hit 800 to 1,000 dental professionals on one ship. Yeah. Fast forward from that, 2023, we're on track to charter a cruise ship. We'll see what happens in 2023 now. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we have a community of fun people that are non-judgment free that like to have a really, really good time and love to be educated from top, some of the top educators in the world. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I got the chance to experience one of these last, uh, last fall in, in October. And man, I'll tell you, like the, the whole thing, it, like it's experience after experience. You guys really, your team goes the extra mile to uh, to just create unique experiences along the way. I was telling somebody, I was like, I don't, I think the only time there was not something planned was from like 2 a.m. to 7 a.m. Yeah. And, then, and then it all started again. And it was exhausting, like, yeah. like in a good way though. You know, you got done and you're just like, you felt full. Um, I think you said to me, it was either you or Christy, but one of your core values with Smiles at Sea, is it fun or yeah. something? Yeah. So. Yeah. So you see it play out in the whole experience. Yes, absolutely. So basically one of our core values is fun. And if it is not fun, we do not do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, I know. So, so look, look ahead to 2021. What is, what does a cruise experience look like for you guys as you're planning 2021? Absolutely. So 2021, uh, you know, it's kind of, I feel like it's, it's, it's a year of collaboration for us. Uh, you know, a lot of these conferences, there's a big X factor. Um, you know, do I reserve these huge meeting spaces? Those massive deposits that are required. Uh, you know, we were subject to those. Uh, that's a huge, that's a huge suck financially. Um, yeah. These cruises, you know, they, they, they ask for massive, you know, quarter of a million dollar plus uh, deposits. And it's, it's hard. And so do hotels, they ask you for the exact same things. Well, meeting planners, associations, dental associations, state associations, study clubs, they're going to hotels. Hotels are asking them to put down deposits on um, these the space um, to, to reserve rooms, to reserve meeting space. And it's very, um, we're put in a very hard position. Well, 2021 is going to be the year of collaboration for us because here's what we know. We know that we've had relationships with these cruise lines for a very long time. And, and while it's very difficult for us, it's a time for everybody to collaborate. So what we anticipate is, as many of conferences coming and collaborating with our organization to essentially side by side have conferences with us on the cruise. So for example, um, the American Academy of Women in Dentistry, the AAWD, they're going to be having their 100th, uh, 100th anniversary celebration on our cruise in April. Oh, cool. Perfect example of a massive association that will be cruising with us. 
Um, it makes sense. There's so little liability compared to a normal conference, and it's easier to join forces as a conference instead of doing it by yourself. So in November, we're going to go from Miami uh, to Coco Cay, the private island, and Haiti. Uh, in April, rather, April 18th to 23rd. And then in November, we're going to be doing um, the cruise uh, from Galveston to Cozumel on the massive uh, Allure of the Seas. That's November the 8th, I believe. Cool. cool. Awesome. Uh, looking forward to it. Sounds fun. You, uh, one of your other businesses, uh, Driven Dental Implant Marketing. Um, man, let's talk about the state of, of just dental implants through this and um, how that's been affected and, and how some of you, you guys are helping your clients just even pivot on, on that through this time. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for asking. So Driven Dental Implant Marketing, man, talk about, I mean, I think the word of 2020 would be hashtag pivot, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, let's face it, you know, um, most of these offices, majority if not all, you know, came to us like, hey, you know, we're, we're in a situation where I don't think many people are wanting uh, during the uncertainty to purchase these $30,000, $50,000 cases. So what do we do? So at this point, we pivoted. Right now, we put all of the implant marketing, we put it on hold and we made a pivot. First off, we switched to emergency and virtual consultations. But the biggest thing that we did is we made a preparation. The preparation that we did was we pivoted them to emergency campaigns and virtual to now we have a situation to where we're actually switching most things to virtual implant consultations. So what happens is, is now you have all these people who are, are ready. Uh, by the way, um, a lot of the patients that are in this age bracket of retirement. Uh, we're, we're talking, you know, 60 years plus. A lot of those patients are the patients that need implants. Yeah. Well, not, those patients weren't really affected as much um, by this financially. They weren't really affected. A lot of them yeah. are retired and their money's safe, right? They still need implants. Okay, that's the that's a good, the good part of the implant stuff. Now, maybe they kept hold on to their money for now. But they're going to be ready to spend their money. That's how the economy gets going, is people spending money. So the big pivot that we made is, is instead of getting a ton of leads that are coming in, essentially what happens is, as the leads come in, they go into our call center, the call center screens the leads and sends them to our virtual console platform. Okay. At that virtual console platform, it is our team who, you know, our, our lead team members, uh, you know, was number one at clear choice for closing big cases. Right. So our virtual call center is literally screening the patient, making sure that they are able to financially get approved for financing and getting them in the right state of mind and then delivering a patient that is approved for X amount of financing and is in the right mindset that these could be the options that the dentist recommends. Yeah. Right? Virtual, 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 because patients are almost expecting you to be in a state of a, a virtual campaign or a virtual consultation. So that's one way. The other way is uh, partnering with people like Dr. Brian Harris, right? And Dr. Brian Harris has his virtual uh, campaign, uh, virtual platform to where the doctor uh, can spend five minutes um, going over a virtual consult with the patient after we drove the lead to them. So we, we had the virtual campaign stuff already set up like a year and a half ago, we just weren't really using it. Now I feel like we're being forced to pivot. Yeah. To virtual campaign stuff. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think it's a brilliant move. I was kind of watching this whole virtual consult space before this. And I remember even somebody asking me like, Hey, what, what do you think? And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not so sure just yet. You know, and it was funny, like post COVID, like will people interact with a doctor virtually can a practice set that up in a way where it's effective? Um, but now on the other end of it, and especially for implants, what, where I've watched this values, I think, because you and I both know, we've talked about this, the, the hardest thing with marketing to dental implants is the sales cycle is longer and there needs to be some like vetting out of that patient before they get into the office. And so for me, this fits perfectly, even in a post COVID like reopening ramped back up, everything's normal environment of like having that as a step of vetting that out. Um, and, and that's what you guys have found with this too. Yes, absolutely. And it can be some of the most, I mean, we've lost 
offices that we work for from a marketing standpoint because that pro you nailed it. The process is long. If you're, you're making a lifetime decision spending twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars 30 dollars 50000 And so the longer that that is, the more frustrated a practice can get, right? So we're basically taking out that entire long part of call it a funnel, call it a process, call it whatever you want. We're getting it to the end and saying, okay, here, doctor, here's your patient that has the financing, that is ready, that is educated, and that is willing. You just have to finish it, right? Yeah. And, and so that, to me, is what was needed. But we were forced to, as a company, do that. Another thing we were forced to do is we were, to fi we were forced to figure out that emergency campaign campaigns actually work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they work. Yeah. You know, forget the, the getting leads sent to your email, forget the long surveys, forget all this. If you have an emergency, you're going to call, and you're going to get it fixed because it hurts. Yeah, yeah. So they convert. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, you know, a couple of weeks ago, was it last week or the week before I was, I was on with uh, Paul Homily and, and we were laughing cause he was like, dentists hate emergencies. Like we hate them. Like, like it's, it's a interruption to the schedule. It throws everything off. We're like, we have this perfectly planned day. They come in and, and he was like, that's why so many offices, they're like, yeah, you can stay open for emergencies. And they're like, peace. Like I'm out. Like we're just done. I'll come back once we can reopen. And, um, and it's so funny because I think one of my, you know, top 10 predictions post COVID is I think dentists are going to appreciate emergencies a whole lot more. Yes. I mean, listen, I think that they're, listen, you know, you're like so good at, at, at opening up startup offices, right? Like that's one of your specialties is bringing up offices from the beginning, right, Josh? Yeah. So, yeah. Don't t tell me what, what you think about this. I think it's a genius idea. Whoever's watching can, can do this, right, with your help. So, don't you think it would be genius for a dental practice to coin themselves like the emergency dentist, like like an actual startup practice is that yeah. emergency dentist? I feel yeah. like a, a genius new startup move because listen, we're ready to go back at like as a whole dentistry. What, let me go ahead and preface this with the proper. PPE mm -hmm. and safety protocols. Right. If you feel comfortable, because I don't want so stones throwing me, okay? <laughs> right. Here come the comments. <laughs> yeah. If you feel comfortable, go back to practice. We're ready if those things happen. We're ready. However, our patients ready? Right. Are yeah. our patients gonna knock down our doorsteps? Are they are they ready? Well, it's our job to make them feel ready. Yeah. Yeah. Right? No, I, I think it's, there, there have definitely been, I've watched some practices prove that you could actually build a profitable model, a profitable practice off of emergency-based care. It doesn't look different. Absolutely. But I'm watching some people do it and kind of start to get in a groove and they're like, oh, it, you know, this, this could be something that works. So it's super interesting. Um, dude, you, you, have, you have lots of, I mean, you have multiple businesses. So I would imagine in a time like this, having that diversification probably helps in certain ways. Uh, it probably has its own challenges in other ways. What are, what are some of the, the upsides to having business diversification and what are some of the challenges? Absolutely. Great. No, great question. So here's the upside. Uh, I've, I've, the upside is, is I've been able to um, keep my team members because while we have went like this, with some of my businesses, I've been able to take those team members and plug them into other businesses. Yeah. That is by far the number one thing because I'll tell you what, the, the worst feeling ever is knowing that somebody is counting on you to eat and they have kids. Yeah. Okay? And yeah. that means that their kids are counting on them. Right. And having to feel like you're letting them down is the worst. It's the worst. So when you have multiple uh, businesses, being able to move them from one one business to the next business, that is by far the best uh, thing. Um, another, I would call it a realization is, look, you know, it's good, it's a good thing to be able to work on your businesses. So I've worked on, I've been able to work on all of my businesses for a couple of years and not work in any of them, which has allowed me to scale and to grow other businesses. But the fact of the matter is, is that when it's time like this, <laughs> you gotta get in. Yeah, you gotta, get, you gotta get in your business. So you gotta be willing to, to take the gloves off, take the shoes off, and take the trash out. 
and, yeah. and, and work and work be able to work hard. So I, I'm a firm believer of having multiple income streams and and um, being able to work uh, in the businesses as well. So I've learned a lot through this. Um, I would encourage anybody out there, whether it's a dentist, you know, a team member, a regular entrepreneur, don't just have one uh, one income stream uh, because you can get caught with your pants down and and be out and be out of luck. Yeah, um, and be out of luck. Dude, I would imagine though, like, because I was trying, I was thinking about this question. I was like, the the downside to that, probably one of them is you're, especially with something like this where it's affecting everything. It wasn't just like an industry sector, you know? Like, well, now you're dealing with this on like three fronts, four fronts, where I'm like, I've got, I actually have like two businesses. um, But, you know, the more you multiply that, I'm like, man, dude, the more that load has to feel heavy. Like, you're, probably put out fires here and then try to put out fires here. You're trying to lead here, try to be positive here. Was that taxing? Was that overwhelming at times? Yes. Yes. And, and, and the most overwhelming thing that could be, or I'll tell you the most overwhelming thing is that you, especially when you are a people pleaser, you try to make everyone happy is, is trying to explain yourself. You mean, you mean well, you mean well for everyone, but some people just don't understand. And so whenever you have to protect yourself, social media can be very mean. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so when you mean well and you're doing well and you're serving and you're doing the right thing, having to go and protect to protect yourself, um, that can be very taxing, be very stressful. So trying to keep all ships floating while having to go and, and explain yourself. Is, is very, 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 very taxing. I mean, I'll be honest. I hit a, I hit a rock bottom for, for a couple of days during this COVID-19. Uh, and it took me, re, you know, reminding myself from teaching other people as a motivational speaker, what happens when you're at rock bottom? What do you do? Yeah. Well, first off, you have to take what's affecting you and you have to get rid of it, right? So it was my phone for me. I had to turn okay. my phone off. Okay. I had to turn off for the day. and had to be around my family. Be around people who support you and that are positive and lift you up. So that's what I did. And I was around them for a day. And then you need to find solutions. So the very next day, I had my entrepreneur organization meeting. And I went to my entrepreneur organization meeting and I told myself, be vulnerable and get uncomfortable. So I was vulnerable very quick. We call it get naked fast. Yeah. So I was vulnerable very quick. And I got, you know, got, got naked fast, got uncomfortable. I told everybody what happened. And I was around people that provided me solutions and then take action. So I took action with their plan and their solutions they gave me. I did all that. And what happened is I went from on a scale of one to 10, I was around a one rock bottom. You never catch me around a one. Uh, mm-hmm. a rock bottom. I'm, I'm a nine today, right? I'm right. a solid nine, right? Um, but I was, I was a one and I've been at a one, one other time in my life. And I went from, from a one to a two to a three. By the time I was at that meeting after the fam, family, I was about a five, uh, five or a six. And I went to that meeting and said, hey, hey, guys, I'm a five or a six. And they're used to me saying, hey, I'm a nine or a ten with a big smile. And I took those solutions. I took action steps. And I went to, to, to a solid um, nine, nine or a ten. And um, so I used all the things. And I'm teaching people as a motivational speaker that, that suffer from depression, that suffer from anxiety. Um, that are in very bad places, and I lift them up. I just took everything that I'm constantly speaking on and encouraging people on, and I used it for myself, and it worked. <laughs> it worked, and I'm back to me, and I'm solutions, and I'm, and I'm back to helping other people. And I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be able to tell the story and be vulnerable about it, be real. Yeah, yeah. No, because I would have to imagine, man, like, you know, you're, everybody would say you're, you're probably one of the most positive guys they know, and that's been one of your, almost part of your brand, you know, especially in social media. Um, and I think it would be really easy for people to assume that you're invincible. Uh, and when something like this happens, it's, well, Elijah's always there. He's always smiling. He's always positive. Uh, and just kind of pulling that, you know, from you. Um, when that, when, when you kind of hit that, that place, is it, I mean, is it anxiety that you're dealing with? Is it, is it episodic? Is it more depression kind of heavy? Like, like what's, what's the feeling? Um, the feeling is, um, I would call it, um, helpless, um, yeah. being in a situation where you can't do anything and you have everything against you and you can't do anything. This feeling, the feeling of helpless yeah. and, um, there's not, there's just nothing that you can do. 
Um, you're, you're any way that you turn, it's, it's the wrong way. You're stuck in a box. Yeah. You're, stuck in, you're stuck in a dark hole and you don't know how to get out. And, yeah. um, and while you're in that box, people are shaking and you're getting thrown around. You're getting thrown down a deep, dark hole. And, and it, it just, you can't explain it to anybody because nobody would get it. And it takes too long to explain. Yeah. And so while you're in that deep, you know, deep, dark box, people are looking for you. <laughs> and you got to, you know, you got to come out of it, but you don't want to come out of it because you don't want anybody to see you like that. And so the only place to turn is, is your family. Yeah. You, you got to get rid of all the darkness. Yeah. Um, and that's what I did. I did what I know. I've been there before. And you got two options. Stay in the box or come out the box. And I knew that when I came out the box, I'd be able to tell people about it. And, um, and I'm out. <laughs> and I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't suffer from any type of depression, any type of, of anxiety. I'm very, very good under stress. Yeah. Um, but there's so much that a human can take. And... Um, I, I went there again, second time in my life. I was 21 the first time. So. Yeah. Now, Matt, gosh, the, that imagery, that visual is, is awesome. I remember having this conversation with Joanna a couple of weeks ago, just because for me, it's been, yeah, it's like you can only deal with so much. It's been episodic through this and it's been more anxiety based, um, you know, just like having a moment where I'm like, why am I having trouble catching my breath? Why is my heart rate elevated? Why, am, you know, but it's like, there's been, just been so much loss. And it's like, I don't know that I've ever experienced a time where it's just been like, regardless of what I do, it's just loss keeps coming in. And whether it's a client or whether it's, you know, income or whether like whatever it is. And you're just like, and I'm like, I'm not good in a world like that. I mean, uh, you know, Drake has this line where he says like, if, if, if I ever came in second, like I'll self-destruct. Like I'm like, dude, I'm, <laughs> I'm real, real close to that. You know, you know, looking at myself, like, um, but that's been the hard thing is just, I think more losses and wins on a regular basis right now. Yeah. And that's been the tough part, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Here's the, here's the best part though. You know, everybody is going through this together. Ever, you know, I know that I'm not, you know, I'm not the only person that's taking these losses. Like it feels reassuring to hear person after person. I don't want anybody to be doing that. I want people to be doing, doing good, but we're all in this together. Right? We're all suffering um, at the same time, uh, which makes it easier to lift one, one another up. It makes us easier to celebrate uh, together as well. And so just as fast as we're going down, we're going to come right back up together. And we're going to be able to talk about this. It's going to be a memory. It's going to be in the history books. Yeah. So anytime time that I think about how, how bad it is, I think about how fast we're going to come back up. And I just make solutions. Because we're not, we're, you know, we're not having problems. We're just in a situation, but we're in a situation together. Yeah, yep. It's part of the story, but it's not the story that's being written. So, dude, I, I got you just a couple more minutes, but this is a good place to pivot um, and and talk about this. Uh, you and I are working on a project. Um, a couple weeks ago, we came up with an idea. Uh, we, you know, we're, we're still we haven't really officially announced it, but I thought you, you want to talk about it a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think it's so awesome. You know, in this industry, you you would you would think that um, the marketing companies, you know, they can be competitive out there. And um, I think something that we've established, um, there, there's quite a few of us out there that we've established that we can all work together. And there's there's a lot of of marketing companies out there, and uh, we we work together quite well. And you and I have established that um, along with a lot of other companies. And essentially what we decided is we all need to band together and we needed to essentially teach um, the entire industry, um, you know, what was possible. And we need to teach uh, the entire industry um, that all of us uh, together need to come together. And just like there's marketing out there on the news saying, hey, you know, uh, the, the world is, is stocked. Dental offices only open for emergencies, et cetera. Well, we need to have the, the biggest comeback ever, and it takes the entire marketing world of dentistry to do that. And so um, we're basically, um, we, you know, what we spoke about is bringing all of the dental marketing companies together, all of us, and having a marketing conference, a marketing conference, and essentially the owners and, and C-level 
um, of these marketing co um, companies basically giving a free conference for everybody and uh, talking about uh, essentially best practices on um, marketing your practices and having the biggest comeback ever. And this, this conference is going to be um, on the 14th or 15th for both. And um, we you know, super excited to collaborate with everybody. And tonight, all of the uh, owners are going to come together and have a mastermind event and discuss how we can help the industry. So super excited to have it. Yeah, man. I, you know, I, I, I had that thought. You had that thought. We happened to be together, had the thought together. And it was like, why don't we do this? And I think like, yeah, I mean, look, you have a marketing company. I have a marketing company. And yet we work together really well. Um, some of my friends in the dental space are own other marketing companies. And I reached out to them and said, hey, want to have you guys on. So, you know, I think it's like, I'm not, I'm not concerned that we're going to lose business. I think it's this bigger vision of, hey, let's help the dental industry reboot and come back and, you know, stage this epic comeback. And I think, man, idealistically, I'm like, if we can help the dental profession kind of show a model of coming back, bouncing back solid. I think that that could ripple out to other, other businesses as well. And I think that's, it's just part of like this national, like let's get back to what we're doing type thing. And so that, that's kind of my hope. But yeah, you're right. We've got a, a call tonight with all the speakers, just going to nail that down. Um, but yeah, the, we'll have promotional material by the end of the week. You'll start seeing it everywhere next week, man. If you're on yeah. social, it's going to be everywhere. Absolutely. I'm super excited for it. Um, you know, you're going to have all these marketing companies marketing the event. So it looks like it's going to be a huge <laughs> now. Uh, like I said, it's going to be, you know, for everybody. I believe, you know, we haven't discussed this all the way yet, but there, there could be an optional um, uh, donation part too for, for giving back. Uh, I think it's important to understand that we're giving this CE uh, and also we want to give back to a purpose. You know, discuss all the details and it would be out for everybody. But yeah, super excited to have it and to serve our community and help be a part of it. Uh, cause bigger than ourselves. So. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, bro, look, I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, I know everybody's, I mean, I'm sure you're just been staying super busy. Um, nobody I know has a lot of free time right now, which is kind of crazy, but, um, most people on this in my audience know who you are, but if somebody wants to reach out and connect with you, where's the best place? Um, I would say the best place uh, would be either social media, this through messaging through social media, um, on Facebook messenger. Um, if not, uh, through social media, you can get a hold of me at info at ElijahDesmond.com or you can go to my website at uh, DrivenDentalMarketing.com or ElijahDesmond.com. Cool. And if you're a practice that is looking to add virtual consults with, with implants or emergency marketing, hit you up. And if you're looking for a weekend getaway in November because you know you're probably going to be working all summer just catching up on appointments, Hit these guys up. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a quick cruise, but a fun weekend one uh, full of experiences. So, yeah, hit them up. All right, bro. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Take yeah. care.